Hello, everybody, and welcome. We'll give everybody a couple minutes to jump into the Zoom. While we do that, uh, if you want to jump into the chat and just share where you're from, and you're, since it's summertime, your favorite flavor of ice cream, I'll kick it off. I'm in Knoxville, Tennessee, and I'm a mint, I'm a mint chip guy. So feel free to jump into the uh, webinar chat and say hello if you'd like to. Oh, Yelena um, is saying that chat is disabled. Are you able to? That's wonderful too. Are you able to enable it? Let's see. Oh, here I can do it. Yes, because you host now. Yes. All right. the The chat should work now. So, thank you to the anonymous that posted it and to Lisa who also posted it. Good to see you again, Lisa. Um, yeah, feel free to type in the chat now. Sorry about that. Nice, we got representation from all over, all over the continent. And the world, sweet. What's funny is seeing all the chat messages, A, makes me want to travel, um, and B, makes me kind of hungry for ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> because I pretty That's, much will eat any- Don't go now, Brendan, yeah. don't go now. Yeah. Why not when you're here? <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you, one of these times, uh, we, sh we, sh we should do a webinar where everyone brings you know, ice cream or we ship out ice cream to everybody. That'd be kind of cool, like a coordinated DoorDash. Everyone gets ice cream, joins the webinar. <laughs> it's a great idea. Yeah, like I'm, I'm liking the idea. The more, the more I think about it. Um, awesome. All right, so I'm in Knoxville. Elena's in Michigan. We got Ruben here from Tampa. Jeff from Denver. I'll be going out to Denver actually in a couple weeks uh, to do some running training up at altitude um, in Leadville. Looking forward to it. Michael in Montreal also with the mint chip. Love it. Jill's in Newport Beach, pretty close to where I grew up in Southern California. In fact, I used to do uh, rowing regattas in the Newport Beach Harbor, which was an awesome place to row because the water was very, very calm. So we usually got some pretty fast times. Kurt is in Charlotte, so pretty close to me. Uh, moose tracks, yeah, absolutely. Lisa's in New Hampshire, peanut butter cup. Another moose tracks, which makes sense because Kathy, <laughs> you're up in Toronto. So yeah, when, I think of, when I think of Ontario, I think of like, yeah, there's gonna be some moose there. Uh, I wouldn't expect anything else. <laughs> that's right, yeah. Miguel in London. Oh, nice. Chachitella, the high-end stuff. Uh, Elizabeth in Benton, Missouri, and I actually mint chip too, awesome. So uh, uh, so I'm a cyclist, I, last week, Yelena knows this already, I was actually biking across New York uh, in Vermont on the Empire State Trail. But last uh, summer, we kicked off summer riding across Missouri on the Katy Trail. So if any of you all like uh, to bicycle, it's a great route. Um, take you from Kansas City over to St. Louis. Highly recommend it. Cedric's in Chicago with some butter pecan, the rich kind. Like it. Um, Christopher in London. We got Thomas from Paris. Fantastic. Sarah in Portland with the strawberry. I'll be out in Portland pretty soon too, actually. There's a conference up in Victoria, BC. And we're going to spend some time in Oregon touring around. Uh, Jan in the UK, fantastic. Andrew's in Cape Town. That's one part of South Africa I would love to visit. I did a trip uh, down to South Africa in the late 90s. It was 1996. Now seems like a long time ago. 
uh, but I spent some time in Joburg and then got out uh, to the Peelensburg Game Park, which is super awesome. All right, Ron's in Dallas, got a lot of family in Texas, including in Dallas. Tracy in Ohio, Vanilla. Mustafa in Egypt, fantastic. It's been a long time since I've been in Egypt. That was 1999 where I got to visit Egypt and tour around, go to a conference there. Benjamin in Wales, we got Plymouth, Neil, Elizabeth out in California, another Dallas, Philip, London, Thomas, Marianne, Venezuela, fantastic. I have not been there yet, would love to go. Shelly's in Halifax with New York cheesecake. Okay, I like it. Is that, like a, is that a Ben and Jerry's flavor? It sounds like one. Um, all right, Andrew's in India, Rodrigo in Preston, UK, Juan's in Philippines. We've got a global audience today. Cape Town is the best, that's awesome. Greetings from Thailand. Man, this is a fantastic crowd. Thank you all for spending time with us from, from everywhere in all different time zones. Uh, we're excited to spend some time with you today. We're talking about cleaning up financial data. So Elena is going to talk about it from the Geocon standpoint. I'll fill in uh, with UNCAT. So first, let me share the agenda. Let me jump over here. Here's what we're going to talk about. Uh, we'll learn how to clean up financial data with Google Sheets, which is awesome. I'm definitely a Google Sheets guy. Um, in fact, I know it more actually now than I do Excel. Both great great platforms, but I tend to use Google the most. Um, and so we'll talk about, Yelena will present the two-way sync functionality, um, which is super awesome. So that's how we're gonna kick it off. We'll also talk about custom report generation and annotations, which is a brand new feature. So even those of you that are coming from, uh, as Geocon customers, you'll be able to see, see that in action and get some tips and tricks. And then lastly, all uh, if you're not familiar already with it, some of you, already using Uncat, already Uncat customers, super awesome, thanks for coming. Uh, if you're not familiar with Uncat yet, Uncat's simply short for uncategorized transactions. So I'll show you our app that we built to help us clean up those transactions with our clients. And it saves a ton of time versus manually notifying clients and copy pasting their responses back into QuickBooks or Xero. Instead, everything syncs and it, it helps to it kind of put it on semi-automatic. So you're still got a great line of communication with your clients, uh, but we have to take some of the sting out of the process. So that's what we're doing today. Um, let me jump to the next one here. That's me. Uh, that's a picture actually taken at the last QuickBooks Connect out in Las Vegas. Um, so for those of you that might be going out this year in November in Vegas, definitely say hello. Uh, I'm easy to spot. I'm six foot eight, so you'll see me at the conference. If any of you are going to Scaling New Heights in St. Louis in a couple weeks. I will also be there. So definitely don't be a stranger. Come come swing by the booth and we'll connect you with some cat swag. Um, before Uncat, I, I did another uh, a sales software company, which was a wonderful experience. And then uh, I'm also, uh, I also like long distance athletic events, uh, long runs like 100 milers and long uh, bike rides, 200s, 500s, uh, stuff like that. I did have to take some time off training last year because I live in East Tennessee. We do have a lot of bears out here, black bears, and I was coming around a turn on my road bike and collided with a bear going about 30 miles an hour, uh, totally wiped out, broke my leg and my foot. Uh, was lucky that I didn't uh, come out of it with, with worse injury. So thankfully, very well recovered, back to training again. And so I've got some events uh, coming up, including in Colorado that I mentioned in the next few weeks, which I'm excited about. All right, Kelly, you're going. Awesome, yeah, definitely swing by the booth. Um, and then to Lisa's question, yes, we, we are recording uh, the webinar so we can send out a copy to everybody uh, who registered and everybody who attended for sure. All right. So brief primer on Uncat, and then Yelena is going to take over and tell you all about herself and about Geocon, and then I'll, I'll present Uncat as a quick demo at the end. Um, we help you all, accountants and bookkeepers, clean up uncategorized transactions with your clients. Uh, we sync with QuickBooks Online. We also have an integration with QuickBooks Desktop through the QuickBooks Desktop Web Connector, if any of you all have desktop clients, and with Xero. Um, and so we work with uh, uh, approximately a thousand firms now, many thousands of clients, and help to sync those uncategorized transactions, get answers back faster. The typical previous workflow was usually to export into spreadsheets and then get answers and copy paste them back in. We don't do that, we sync all the data. And so I'll, I'll show you in the demo how it works. But if, if, you, if you have clients with uncategorized transactions, with mo which most of us do, uh, Uncat will save you a ton of time and it's just $5 a month per client. 
So it's a very low cost app. You get a lot of bang for your buck. Um, we're currently in the Intuit developer growth program, which is an awesome opportunity uh, to continue to refine the app and, and boost our go-to-market uh, uh, with Intuit as a partner, which is cool. Uh, and then we had a ton of fun back in March as part of kind of the March madness for those of you that follow um, uh, American collegiate basketball. Uh, we were the winner of the accountant bracket challenge, uh, which was fun. So we got some, some, some industry notoriety for that. Mostly it was a good excuse to get our cat uh, icon out in front of everybody, which makes people smile. All right, Yelena, over yep. to you. I'm ready. Yeah. Hi, everyone. So my name is Yelena, and I am a left hand of our CEO, Andrei Kostarnikov. So we are uh, handling GCON. So what a little bit about me. So I have about 20 years experience marketing and IT, mostly in financial and banking sector. And I am absolutely amazed to put all my skills and uh and knowledge to gcon i really enjoy work in my team so it's really it's really fun and i couldn't resist brandon's cat so i put my dog here so this is my dog three years old german shepherd i just want i just feel it's like beautiful picture i want you guys to enjoy that um all right so let's talk a little bit about gcon uh Next slide. Thank you, Brandon. You still can't control it, right? Yes. Okay, perfect. So what is GCON? Uh, if you're GCON customer, it will be absolutely information that you already know and use our application. But for new people, GCON is a cloud-based application which integrates Google Sheets and various cloud accounting softwares. So this specific webinar, we're focusing on QBO. And you know, because it's based in US, it's more popular here, but each and every function which is exists in GCON for QBO product, exist in uh, uh, GCON for Xero, Sage, Sage Cloud Business Accounting, FreshBooks, and we have um, uh, Xero's uh, software, which is uh, Xero Practice Manager and Workflow Max. So, and what uh, GCON does? So, GCON does two way of synchronizations. Well, when we talk about two ways of synchronization, you're talking about data movement, right? So you're talking about download data and upload data. When we talk about download data, it's your raw data extract from uh, tables, uh, software uh, cloud accounting, uh, uh, source like QBO, like Xero, Sage FreshBooks. When you, uh, you talk about uh, consolidated reports, you're talking about standard slash custom reports. So that part is taking care of downloads. And then we have huge function, which is used by plenty of our customers, it's an upload. So when you have uh, needs to upload only a couple invoices, couple bills, estimates, I would definitely say, okay, go to the source and do this upload manually over there. But when you're talking about bulk upload, so it's easy to use our application, it's easy to create data in your spreadsheet and dump everything to back to your source. So, and all these processes can be automated. So for us, it's a whole concept how to set up workflows. I don't want to focus a little bit. Uh, I don't want to focus much on this concept, but I, I will show you briefly what we do. And the, another big part of our application, how customer uses use us, uh, we provide flat files uh, data to allow uh, uh, people, our users, to build dashboard solution, BI solution. And as a BI solution, I want to say people use uh, Google Data Studio, Tableau, Looker, Microsoft tool, even though we're not based on Microsoft, but I can see like huge application how people use us as the middleware to build this uh, nice dashboards, tables, something which your customer likes, right? So that's it. So I guess we are ready to jump. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll keep talking without showing anything. Yeah, sounds, no, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. The, the proof of the pudding is always in the eating, right? Everybody wants to see the app. A lot of you absolutely, are absolutely. It already, but let's for for everybody else. Yeah. Let's check it Absolutely. out. Absolutely. So uh, what's happened here? You should be able to see my spreadsheet. Yeah. 
And the first thing what I want to show you, very simple uh, way how to clean up your data. We have a lot of uh, customers who use this cleaning financial data uh, processes by end of fiscal year. So we see a lot of uh, handling uh, this kind of uh, data during November, December months, and if you're in US, if you're based on US. So what do we have? I have an example of invoice. So first, what I did, I download, uh, I extract data from uh, QBO, and it's in voice table. And what I'm going to show you, how did I do that? So I select Jacon for QuickBooks, and then I use get accounting data. So these many options allow me to pull, uh, pull any tables, financial tables, which QBO has and uh, for which QBO create API for us because we use API for connection. So in my case, it's invoice. So, and why did I put this structure? So I want to download the structure. So eventually I can do appropriate mapping. So uh, get accounting, for, uh, get data from QBO. I select certain attributes and I don't want to waste your time because I'm going to show you query which I already created because we have limited time here. So this is my query. And what you can see, I selected customer name, due date, uh, invoice ID, invoice number. So ID is internal um, identifier for in QBO. Uh, some attributes uh, from, your, uh, from your line of items, uh, quantity, unit price it's uh, nice to have it location just to show you it's possible and then i execute the query so when i execute the query i have this set of data here and i'm going to show you how invoice this is uh uri how we invoice that specific invoice look in a qbo screen so i click on uri and this is what it showed me all right, so what I'm going to do now, let's assume I want to clean up description, right? Description is wrong and invoice is paid for QBO. Later on, you can update quantity rates, you can update taxes, whatever you need to. But in our case, I will update description. I will put updated new description and update it over here. And then my next step, I need to create uh, upload template. So this template, nothing other than mechanism, which is allow you to map header of the uh, fields and the field uh, head of your uh, column in the spreadsheet to the fields in QBO. So basically I will go to extension and I will select upload accounting data to QBO. As soon as I already created for us, so I will push this um, uh, template, I will download template, and you can see how mapping uh, works in my template. So the mode, which is I select, I want to try this template, I select currently selected row. So this is what I recommend. So because later on, when you're going to have thousand and thousand records, I would, I would definitely suggest you to change your mode to new rows. And our application smart enough will be understanding which one you consider new rows and start uploading this or oh, all rows. In this case, you create, let's say 2000 rows of data and you will, um, you will manually or automatically push this data back to the source, back to QBO. But for now, currently selected row, you have a couple, um, couple operations that you can use. Here, a little bit IT terminology, but insert means you create new. But for now, we do cleaning up, we're taking care of update, we're modifying our records. So, And what you see as a mapping, you will see fields which are really available for you in uh, uh, through uh, QBO API. So those are fields, it's informational only. It's just helping you to see what is available for you and some values which you set up in QBO. So basically it's your values here. And if you look at the second table, this is exactly mapping. So this is core of this functionality. And what it says, it's very easy to understand. So this is column in a spreadsheet, which is mapped 
to QuickBooks file. And what does it mean when you try to push data? QBO knows which field goes to where in QBO in your spreadsheet, right? All right, so this is the mapping and we're going to try how it's going to work. So I highlight my invoice and I, I do execute and save. So I click on this button. And when I close this um, window on the right side, I scroll a little bit to the right and I can see, all right, this is my timestamp. I will increase a little bit. And this is my ID successfully. Uh, operation finished and I will click on the link or I can go on the website and actually find this invoice and see if it was updated or not. But I will do it no, through uh, spreadsheet and now I can see updated and updated. That's it, voila. So this is how you set up your uh, template for one invoice. So now you do have the ability to come back to your template and then you will change the template mode for all data and that template will be ready for you to use it for big bulk of data. So this is how you clean up your data. What you can clean up here? You can clean up uh, journal entries. It's a big task, right? Especially by end of the year. Invoices, bills, purchase orders, this is sales receipts, right? This is something which you can do, you probably will do manually, but now you have opportunity to do it in bulk and then you do have ability to automate it, all right? So this is big chunk of cleaning. So next one will be fun. So next one, it will be first time, I'm going to show that, I hope it works. So uh, I'm going to talk about annotations. So annotations is a common terminology for adding notes, comments, different formulas. Sticky notes, yes, it's a part of annotations. So what are you going to do? Uh, I'm going to pull a p &L report, it's most popular. I will go to custom accounting reports and uh, select p &L. I will select profit and loss. This is all our reports. And uh, I am going just to execute. I'm not going to show any details of report. I have separate webinars for that. So we will wait. Each and every request is go and grab data from QBO. We're not saving this. Okay, this is profit and loss. So now I create a couple of, couple of formulas I prepared for this webinar. So. In date range setup, what are we going to do? I want to show you how to create gross profit margin and net profit margin. It's a nice KPI data, right? Which is not part of PL right now. And I prepare formula, so I will not waste time. And this is how we're going to insert it. Uh, I will uh, insert gross profit margin KPI data after gross profit, right? I'm going to insert rows below, it's inserted row 25. Then I'm going to insert another row because I want to have some space. And now in that specific row, I'm going to copy my title. All right, oops, where am I? Copy my title and I'm going to copy formula. This is a formula. So it's calculated. It's a gross profit margin divided by revenues. So now I want to have this formula in all across all my uh, months, right? In PL. And now I want to do a little bit beautification. So I want to highlight this row. Let's say background is gray. I want to increase font. I want to put it a little bit um, uh, red color and bold, right? And then I want to I want to highlight this margin row. I will do background, let's say this color and uh, 
bright, okay, and bold, all right? And then I want to implement borders, all right? And then what I want to do, I want to keep my formatting first. And secondly, I want to keep my formula. So I'm opening again my template. Uh, first of all, I will go to change full settings and I will say keep original formatting. So that part will take care of my color, my background, font size, and that's it. And then I will do update and execute. So what I'm hoping to do, I, I want to see that my formula stay after data is refreshed. All right, cool. So this is what we have. Now I want to do more. So I want to say, I want to insert column here. I will insert column on the right. And I will say, this is my notes, all right? And when I look as an accountant and see, okay, I have a problem with that number. Let me highlight this number. It has a problem. And my note should say, needs to be verified in the question mark, right? So maybe somebody who is working for me said, okay, it needs to be verified and check what's happening here. And I will put it in blue, all right? So anyone can see that. Then I want to put another annotation. I put in the comments. Oops, as soon as I spell nicely, we will have comments. Comments. And I will put verify this row. All right. And I will highlight and change color. I like to have color because it's most visible, right? When you open PNL, you immediately see what is the problem, what on what should I pay attention. And I will put this as a pink color, purple color, and I will do refresh. I will do refresh. Again, we're going to grab set of data and refresh that specific template. And as soon as it's done, we will see, okay, data has been refreshed. Your extra column and extra row, which has some formula state and outside comments still there. So, so basically this functionality available for you for pretty much 90% of reports and consolidated reports. And as example, what I want to show you, I did a uh, profit and loss. Uh, I'm sorry, I did um, I did net profit margin, which is net profit to revenue. And you definitely see that on the on the bottom. So it's kind of my homework. So and this is again formula when you calculate your uh, net profit to your revenue. And again, I want to show you I can update or refresh data. And you will have your notes, comments, your formula untouched. All right. I can tell you more. You can change your PL parameters. Now we pull uh, data for 12 months, right? You can remove year to date as the last column, the usual way how you handle PL. You can change your date range. Uh, you can select different amount of months. Uh, you select not 12 months or like two, six months, whatever you want. And you do know profit and loss work up to five years in a one shot and QBO doesn't have any issues. So, and the next step, what you will do when you set up a notation, that will be your automation because this is whole key, right? Of using Jcon, it's automate your process. And that will be our regular process. And I definitely recommend everyone start using that. You create workflows. So you create uh, workflows uh, by selecting create workflow. Uh, then it will be uh, you set up name of the workflow, let's say refresh, uh, refresh, and you can put description, you can add 
any templates you need to be part of your refresh process you schedule that you can schedule a refresh every three four hours five hours daily weekly based on your business needs you also it's a very powerful function here uh a lot of our customers will know that but for new customers it will be wow it's nice it's nice feature you can email these reports those reports to your clients and you can create separate workflow and say okay i would like my client to receive this uh, set of reports every sunday you can do it or monthly right you can do it or you can set up any alerts on any conditions for example you push your uh you put extract of your invoices and you you want to say okay two days before invoice due day i want to notify such and such customer so this is absolutely amazing application of alert and backups so don't forget about backups as soon as we love google sheets google sheet um refresh your data in that specific file right we don't create copies but let's assume you reconcile your monthly work and you need to have your snapshot of your data and your data have to stay somewhere this is your backup you create copy or snapshot of your data and you save new file in your google drive under your google account so basically what it gives you it gives you opportunity to come back like in the six months and and see okay what did i have in september 2022 okay here it is here's my data so this is workflow and this is how you set up automation that all right super cool i love the yes. backup yelena yeah. do you have it uh can I give you a couple of questions from the Absolutely, audience? absolutely. Uh, Chad asked, can Gcon be connected with QuickBooks desktop by chance? No, unfortunately not. Uh, for us, the uh, concept was, uh, is for us, as soon as we need to uh, do separate installation for desktop, it will be a lot of security involved. So we don't want to go that path and api it's the easy way and more we feel it's a future step to use cloud technology so basically and uh based on qbo tendency right and the way how their implementation goes so they will be moving to cloud cloud technology if andre if andre want to say something please jump <laughs> but this is what i feel so uh so next question luann asked if an extra row was added when you refresh the data, like there's a new account that gets added. Yeah. Would the notes move along with the correct row? Like if you already have notes it will in there, be, will they yeah, it will be hooked. Added? Yep, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a wonderful question. So it will be hooked to the to appropriate row. This is whole idea. So it took for us to implement its nice four months. So it's very universal, very deep solution. So it's not like patching here. Yes, it will be. Uh, uh aligned to the proper place yes gotcha and i think that aligned it was a simultaneous question from serge and i think it's the same question right if the chart of accounts changes if there's new yes. accounts new items yes. will it still be attached to total yes. income and, and, it, yes. and it does stay attached yeah, um, yeah. andrew's stay. question is more uh rhetorical because obviously he loves the functionality when yeah. did the uh annotations feature come out come out to but yeah, when did you release? It's, the, it's, uh, it's already released. Sorry. Yeah, when, when did it when did it release? When did it go? All right, we released it two weeks ago. Oh, fantastic! All right, so it's brand new. So, it's absolutely yeah. brand new. And nobody's seen it. Andrew, it's, 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 in, it's in there now. That's awesome. Yes. yes. Very cool. And and uh, I want to add into this as soon as you see the new feature only for QBO, Gcon for uh, QuickBooks, but it will be available for our zero users shortly maybe maybe a couple of weeks we will take to see how QBook, quickbooks users are like it and then you will use it for Xero as well gotcha one uh one quick maybe last question here from matthew uh yep. you talked about you know showing how to clean up data how would it work if you wanted to add new data only uh new data only uh, from technology wise it goes like this if uh, you use the same spreadsheet, right, the same set of data, and you already upload this chunk of data, this chunk of data, maybe somewhere here, so our program will be checking what was not uploaded, and we will be smartly enough to pick up those rows, and it will be next chunk 
to be uploaded or these rows and then we will check what else you have so this is how it works if you select all rows so basically we don't care about this empty we will get all your data and we will try to push it did i answer your question i i think so i'll i'll defer yeah. uh i'll defer to matthew to write back in and make sure but um yeah, yeah okay perfect yes indeed um Andy's question is, do you have a do you have like a, a video or a training guide on that annotation feature that that recently came out? Um, yeah, I, I click something on camera. It stopped working, right? Oh gosh. Yes, oh, we no do problem. have yeah, it's okay. <laughs> so we do have um we do have a lot of extra uh videos on our YouTube channel. So it's Jacon Integrator. And it's a big videos and small videos. So basically a uh, small one you can find information up to the point like how to set up workflow, how to do upload. So it's three, four, five minutes video. So it's very convenient. And at the same time, you can pull biggest video, which uh, which has like 45 minutes. Okay, Just great. Finish. Cool. And maybe, maybe we can, uh, uh, you can certainly include some of those links, right? When we send out the recording. Absolutely, so, absolutely. Yeah, I'll do that. That'll, uh, that'll I'll cover do that, that uh, yeah, for yeah. you, Andy, hopefully. Um, yeah. Okay, uh, a few more quick ones, and then I'll show you around Uncap a little bit too. Um, so, here should be an easy one. How quickly does Geocon update when you make changes inside zero? Um, usually it's right away. Okay. And only in big uh, in big transaction, let's say account transactions, it will take some time because we try to cache it because we need it to pull your whole year uh, financial data. Gotcha. Lorenzo's question is, they can see that Geocon can aid in migrating data from one accounting software to another. Can they create a transaction report from QuickBooks and copy the data in the report from zero and save as a new transaction? Does that make uh, sense? Yes, it makes sense. We do have actually a mechanism. We create a couple upload templates which allow you to uh, download data uh, from QuickBooks and upload it to zero and vice versa that upload templates will help you. If you want to do it manually, you uh, you put your data manually to your spreadsheet and then create template to upload data to Xero QuickBooks, you can do that way. Gotcha. And then uh, Jansen had a, a kind of a, a, a support related question, which is, uh -huh. is there a path to being able to update one line item out of multiple from one ID? It sounds like currently, if they try to update one line item out of multiple, it will yes. remove the other uh, line items in. Yes, I got it. Yeah, okay. I got it. So currently it's not available just because for us, it's easy, right? It's easy to down upload everything and put it back. But we do have this request in our enhancement list, and we will be working on that too, because we see the needs. So it will be available. I don't want to, don't catch me. It cannot be like maybe like next two weeks, but right. we will have this enhancement here. <laughs> we'll do that. <laughs> Sounds good. I, that, that's fair. We're not gonna, yeah, we won't hold, hold you to it artificially. Yes, yes. Um, fantastic. Um, well, if we're good to go, still uh, obviously feel free uh, to type in questions into either Q&A or chat and we'll get to as many of them as we can here on the webinar. If it's good with you, Elena, I'll uh, jump in and uh, show everybody around. Absolutely, I am. I am. I'm waiting. I'm waiting to see your application because I never saw that. It will be amazing. Please let's do it. Please. Let's do it. All right. Yep. Uh, are you able to see my screen? Okay. Looks like yes. All right. Fantastic. Um, so right now you're on the home page of Uncat. Um, it's at uncat.com. Like I mentioned, uncat is simply short for uncategorized. Um, our graphic designer had a lot of fun. Uh, we like to have fun uh, here at the company. So you'll notice the U, if you turn it 90 degrees, is actually a question mark because these are uh, transactions that we have a question about and we need to ask the client so that we can properly categorize the transaction. Um, why properly categorize transactions? It's basically a rhetorical question. Um, we do it for lots of reasons, obviously to file accurate taxes, to create uh, reports that are insightful and have meaning, uh, to be able to evaluate budgets, and of course to preempt and avoid or perhaps answer 
uh, audits if they come up, right? No one wants to get audited with a million dollars and ask my accountant. Um, that doesn't work out super well. So those are the reasons why. Uh, someone else saw that U in the logo and said, oh, I love how the U is a cattail. Uh, we had not intended that, but now it is obviously also officially a cattail. Um, and then we have our famous cat riding a pony across the desert, which is it simply intended to make everybody smile. Um, so I'm going to show you around Uncat. If you like what you see, whether you're on the demo or later today or later this week or next week, uh, whenever is convenient. Obviously, if you do it now, then we'll be best friends forever. Uh, if you click start a free trial, what will happen is it will pop up and you'll create a simple account with Uncat and then you'll connect to your accounting software. So Xero or QuickBooks Online or QuickBooks Desktop. And then you'll choose the first client that you wanna connect, right? So choose that client file, give them a quick heads up first and say, dear client, when you use Uncat this time, you'll receive an email. That way, when you put their email address in Uncat, they'll receive an email from us that says your accounting professional needs some information back from you about some transactions. Uh, click here to go straight to your Uncat dashboard. And the reason I start there is we want everything to be super, super, super easy for clients. So here, the client doesn't need to create an account. They don't need to set a password. They don't need to download an app. All they have to do is click the link in their email and it will take them straight into their Uncat dashboard, which I'll show you now. So this is an example of what a client would see when they click that link. So maybe it says, hey, you've got $11,000 in uncategorized transactions, click here to see them. They'll click, it will pop up. There'll be a little introduction video if they need it, but most clients see this and they think, I get it. I need to provide a description of the transaction. What was this deposit from Square, right? Square is probably not the customer. It's probably just the source of the, of the funds. So what was this all about? Was this a reimbursement from a friend? Is this a payment from a customer? What is this? So in the description, we're looking for kind of a who, what, why. Uh, similarly, here are a couple of purchase expenses, one from Costco, one from Amazon. Um, as you all can imagine, we see a lot of expenses flow through the platform that originate at big box stores where you can buy almost anything. So these are the Amazon, Target, Walmart, Costco, Home Depot, Lowe's, right? Any big box store where you can buy lots of different things. There's lots of SKUs. And it's hard to know exactly what those items were for, even if you have a receipt, right? If someone buys a television from Amazon, I see the receipt for the television. We still need to know what the TV was for. Was it purchased for the office? Was it purchased uh, for a conference as a gift for a client or for the family home, in which case perhaps it's an owner's draw uh, for that business. So lots of different possibilities. And so we want to have a line of communication with our client to figure out what that was for. Uh, Typically, what we and most people would do is go into Zero or QuickBooks and export a spreadsheet of uncategorized transactions for a point in time, send it to the client and wait for them to respond and perhaps remind them a few times uh, to respond. And we call that process herding cats because it's difficult to keep track of. Uh, here, what we do is we sync the transactions in real time. They come into Uncat, the customer can respond. So here they can put a description in. If they have a question or comment about the transaction, they can add it to this messages feature. And then they can click here and add or view any attachments. Then when they click save, the transaction will disappear from their dashboard because now their homework is done. It'll sync into the accounting software. So the description will go to the, the description, the attachment will go to the attachment. And then it's also gonna show up on your dashboard, which I'll show you now. Uh, so the data is all gonna sync to the accounting software. You'll receive a daily digest email that says, uh, you know, dear Brandon, you have seven clients that updated 54 transactions, let's say. And here are the clients, here are the transactions they updated. And you'll be able to click through on your magic link and come into your dashboard. So here's an example, demo client Acme Incorporated. And here highlighted are the ones that the client has updated. So they've provided a description. And in some instances, they've also provided an attachment, typically a receipt if it's, a, if it's an expense or a PO or a contract of some sort if it's, a, uh, if it's income. So here we can review their description and based on the description, we could come in here and categorize the transaction appropriately. So based on what they told us, hopefully we can choose the right category. If we can't, we can add a message to the transaction. It will send it back to the client to get more clarification. Um, but based on their description, we'll categorize the transaction. Optionally, we can assign a class to the transaction. I'll click this far left button to see some additional fields. 
So if I want to assign a customer, a location, make it billable, uh, assign tax, and in the United States, so the tax is just a toggle switch. For those of you in Canada and the UK and other jurisdictions that are on the webinar, you'll see a tax drop-down menu, so you can choose the right tax rate for the transaction, and it will align with whether you've selected inclusive or exclusive as the default setting uh, in your accounting software. Um, I mentioned all that because obviously it's an important consideration. Uh, you can select a transaction, and then we have an action menu up here, and you can do things like split. So you can split transactions by category or by class. You could also select multiple transactions and do things like assign a class to multiple at a time. So a little time-saving features there. You can click the top of any column here to sort. So if you want to sort by transaction amount or the origin account for transactions, I want to see all the checks and then all the credit card transactions, you can do that. You can also search for transactions. So if you want to just take care of all the Amazon expenses first or see all of those in one snapshot, you can do that and handle them. Once you've categorized and click save, transactions disappear from your dashboard. Everything syncs into Zero or QuickBooks and you're done. Um, so it's a nice round trip uh, process. The, the next question typically is, how is this data getting in here? How does my client get notified? So I'll click through on client settings to show you. So the first settings that you'll select are which accounts should we sync into Uncat from your accounting software? And you can choose as many as you want. These are pretty typical selections. Ask my accountant, uncategorized expense, income asset, uh, suspense, ask client, client to advise. We see all those all the time. But if you've named them something different, right? Ask Yelena, ask Brandon, because those, those are the names of your client users. That's perfectly fine too. You can sync all those in. Uh, this is the sync start date. You can sync back as far as you want. Uh, the default is we'll sync back three months. Additional months after that are just $5 a month, which is, by the way, our same pricing going forward, right? So you just pay $5 a month per client that you connect to Uncat. Um, if you want to sync transactions missing a certain field, let's say you've already categorized them, you're perfectly happy with that. However, they're missing a class or they're missing a location or a customer. Then you might ask uh, the customer for that additional information, ask the client so that you can assign classes. You might ask them to do it, and I'll show you how to do that down below. Uh, notifications typically go out weekly. Uh, that tends to be the best way to get client responses. If you do monthly, which many of us used to do in the past, oftentimes a client will uh, forget what they did three or four weeks ago, right? They're busy, they've done a lot. So sending a weekly notification tends to be a better cadence to get quality responses back from the client. It also has the effect of the client saying, wow, my accounting professional is really on top of my books, right? They're trying to make sure everything is straight. And so when we send a notification, to the client, it will say, hey, you've got $1,357 of transactions that need your attention. And they're thinking, that's my money. So I should answer those questions. This is important and I want my books to be right. So it's sort of a help me help you uh, type of notification. Here are client dashboard settings. So the default is a client will be able to update the description and that's required and a receipt might be optional. However, if you have a client that understands their chart of accounts, they know how to assign categories or classes or locations or customers or all of the above. You can toggle on this superpower switch, we call it. And then you have total control over which fields from the accounting software should be visible for your client, uh, should be editable, meaning they can update it, and which one should be required. So in this example now, not only is description required, but we're also asking the client or we're requiring them to provide a class we can then review that from our dashboard, right? Uh, you as the accounting professional, and then save it in or change it if they make any mistakes. And then here are client users. You can have as many client users and as many coworkers of yours on the platform as you want. These are client users. So here you can see the main admin user is gonna see all the transactions. Meanwhile, this user that we invited at the bottom is just going to see uncategorized expenses that originated on their credit card. So let's say they're a regional sales director, they don't really know about the spending that's happening at headquarters, but they should be responsible for answering questions about their own expenses. So we're only gonna notify them about and only show them their own transactions in their dashboard. Meanwhile, other users would be able to see additional transactions and provide clarity back. Um, here's also kind of a power feature. You can click for any user and add a phone number. That's a great feature for clients that may not be responsive by email. They might not even be checking email anymore, 
but all of us tend to be pretty responsive to text messages. So we'll send them a text message reminder, has their magic link in the message. All I have to do is tap it. It'll open up Uncat and Safari on their iPhone or Chrome on their Android device. They can tap in their descriptions, upload receipts and other documentation from their camera roll or their files on their phone and click save. And that tends to be one of the more favored workflows for Uncat because business owners are so busy. They don't necessarily want to go back to their desktop or laptop and open up an app or a big spreadsheet, uh, uh, how we used to do it. So being able to just click through on their phone really fast and easy way to get quick responses back and, and, and get to month end close through Uncat. Um, in terms of volume that we see through our application, we helped uh, our customers categorize about 175,000 transactions last year worth almost uh, a half billion dollars. So it, it's a lot, right? There's a lot of uncategorized out there and we need that information back from clients in order to close the books properly every month. Um, so there's definitely a lot of action in the app. We're very busy during busy season, during tax season, doing cleanups for 2022. It's great though to add your clients and get in that nice weekly cadence so that for 2023, you're getting answers back. Everything's clean at the end of each month. And then when you get to tax season uh, next year, early in 24, uh, you're going to have the answers you need already. So it provides a really nice uh, workflow and segue there. All right. Uh, I know there's some questions that came in, so I'll answer at least a couple of questions. Oh, okay. Answered. Fantastic. Um, yep. Classes, absolutely. Locations, customers, all those have supported Matthew. So that's a great question. Um, oh, Brenda, how about, Brenda, how about first, first question? Where you can purchase Uncat t-shirts? Oh, where, where can you purchase Uncat t-shirts? <laughs> Funny that you asked. So if you're on our website, you can actually click through because we got that request quite a bit. I'm wearing my Uncat shirt right now. So if you want Wonderful. a cat shirt, you can go to our website, you can order one and it'll be uh, printed and shipped out to you. So kind of cool. They've also, they've also got stickers and notepads and uh, magnets and board games and the whole thing. Um, so check it out. The, uh, these are the accountant firm settings. So if you click settings at the top, you'll see a list of the clients you've connected to Uncat. You'll then see a list of your coworkers. So for those of you that work in firms with colleagues, you can invite your coworkers here. You'll be the firm admin. You can invite other firm admins. Client admins can invite clients and update settings. Uh, they just don't see the billing. And team members just update transactions in the dashboard. They aren't going to be able to change any settings, but they can categorize and they can uh, update fields and sync them in the software. So three different permission levels. You can also assign clients to particular users if you want to. By default, the user will see all the clients. But if you want to narrow it down so they only see specific clients that you want to assign to them, you can easily do that here. Um, these are the firm settings. So this is pretty popular. Uh, you're essentially co-branding the apps. So you can change the color of Uncat, right, to match your brand. Let's say your brand is blue. The name of your firm will show up here at the top where it says uh, demo account in, in my demo account. Uh, and you can also upload a logo that will show up at the top of every page. That way, when your clients land here, they're seeing your name, your color, your logo. They know they're in the right place and they know it's a great service provided uh, uh, by your accounting or bookkeeping firm. Um, we have a fun little certification program. It's a, it's a, a self, self certification and you can grab the cool Uncat badge, just like you can get QuickBooks and Zero badges. We created a badge because everyone wanted a badge with a cat on it. Uh, so we've got that. We have a nice referral program. Uh, we love hearing back from customers and seeing customer reviews. We've got several hundred on the QuickBooks app store as well as on Capterra and G2 and other service providers. Uh, and billing I already mentioned, it's just $5 a month across the board um, for clients that you connect to Uncat. The, um, I'll show you one last thing because Elena showed you a new feature that was just released two weeks ago. I'll show you a feature that we haven't released yet, but we're very excited to do so. Uh, and that will be coming out probably in the next week or so. And so here you can see the transactions tab here at the top, that's what we were looking at. We also added this global client chat. So if you have questions, you want to have a dialogue back and forth with your client, that's here now. And then here are non-transaction based communications. We got asked by a lot of our customers, what if I want to ask my client a question that's not tied to a transaction? What if I want to ask them for a bank statement and get them to send it to me? What if I want to request a W9 for a vendor that they do business with? Uh, how can I do that? What, what if I want to send them a report or request a report? Uh, this is now a way to do that. So we built this recently. We're going to release it. We're really excited about it. This is an example, right? We asked the client, please upload a W9. Client responded, will do. They did in fact upload it. 
it's here, uploaded it twice because I was testing. Um, and now as the accountant, I can view it and I can say, great, I got it, I'll mark it as complete, um, it's done. On the client side, that looks like this, right? Waiting for approval. So I've done my work and now I'm just waiting for my accounting professional to accept what I sent to them. So it's gonna be a really nice way to sort of centralize uh, a lot of client questions because people were saying, look, my client is very reliably coming in to uncat to update these transactions. I wanna ask them these additional questions in the same place. I don't wanna to have to uh, play email tag anymore. I want it to all be housed here. So they, they get the normal alerts and notifications. They're coming in here anyway. Let's just centralize it and get those answers back. So we're excited to get that out. Um, thanks very much, Elizabeth, for the kudos. Love having you on there. Um, it is a time saver. That's, that's certainly uh, why we built it. And a, and a key is what you mentioned, which is that clients like it, right? A client has to use it. If the client's like, I'm not going to use this, then it's not useful to anybody. So we want to make it dead simple for clients because we're trying to save them time so they can go back to working on their business. And as a result, it saves you time also. So um, really appreciate it. That's awesome. Um, yeah, Jorge, can I, can, you, can I show what the client sees? This is an example of what the client sees. So this is sort of this communications tab that we're releasing soon on a transaction basis. This is what they're gonna see by default. So they can enter descriptions in and attach files. But if you want them to assign classes or even assign uh, accounts to various transactions using the settings that I showed earlier, those will show up in this dashboard as well. So uh, from your dashboard, there's even a button I'll show it to you here. So you're looking at your transactions at the bottom. It says view as client, and it's simply showing you a preview of what the client's going to see. So if I click that button, right, it shows me what the client can see and do. It won't let me actually edit it because I'm not the client, I'm the accountant, but it shows you what they're going to see. So anytime you're wondering like, oh, is my client going to understand this? Absolutely. You can click that button and kind of see a preview of what you're asking them to do. Jana, thank you very much. I greatly appreciate it. And Andrew, yeah, give it a go. Um, fair to say also, we all know each other now. So I'm easy to reach. This is my email address. I'm brandon at uncat.com. Shoot me over any questions. Um, if you're on QuickBooks desktop, everything's gonna look and feel the same. You'll use the web connector, which is a few additional steps because there's not a web-based API like Yelena mentioned earlier. Um, works great. The, the only feature difference is that the web connector doesn't support syncing attachments. So we'll get the attachments in Uncat from your client, and then you can simply download them and pop them into QuickBooks Desktop yourself if you want to. Um, on the zero side, if you're a zero customer, then again, the look and feel is all going to be the same. However, for transactions that were reconciled from the bank feed in zero, which is going to be most of them, then the zero locks those transactions to third-party updates. So we can notify the client, we can get their responses back, you can review them, and from there, we put them into notes in Zero, and we provide a direct link to Zero so that you can finally update the transaction there. For that last step, we're actually in development of a browser extension so that through the front end, we'll be able to make the updates directly, and it'll be a lot more like the QuickBooks integration. So that's coming soon. If you're on Zero, keep an eye out for that. We're excited about it because it's just going to kind of help complete the round trip a bit faster. That said, we've got plenty of firms on zero uh, using the app and they're getting a lot of value out of it because it helps them communicate with their clients and get answers back. All right, a um, couple more questions. Pricing for downloading two years of activity is the new cost based on per month of download? It is, yep, it's just per month going back beyond uh, the original three months. So yeah, great question. Because yeah, sometimes folks were wanting to do you know pretty significant cleanups that was quite a bit of data to sync. And so we wanted to align that with sort of the low cost of uncap. Good question. Um, Jill, are there plans to add a markup field for the billable option? So when there's an additional percent charge for an expense bill to the client, it's a great idea. Um, I will mention there's a button at the bottom of uncap. So have questions, you can book time with me, have ideas. Then you can click here and it'll go straight to our feature request. And these are all requests that people have made that they would like to see an uncap. That would be a perfect place to post that. That way other people can see it, vote on it, and we'll see it and be able to add it uh, to our development queue. And or be able to tell you like, hey, it's, you know, is, whether it's possible or not, technically, right? Some, some of the suggestions that we've gotten in the past, 
simply aren't supported yet by the API, and so we can't do it. Uh, but most of the time, uh, it's something that we were able to do. Uh, once the client responds and adds attachment, how does it look in zero? Does it create an invoice or a bill? Great question, Janet. It doesn't create invoices or bills. It's simply updating uh, transactions that have been put into an account that syncs with Uncat. So from zero, that's typically suspense. Sometimes, um, you know, folks will call it client to advise or ask client. And so it's making updates to fields on that transaction. Hope that makes sense. Um, Tom's question, when a client attaches a file in Uncat, it will attach the file to the transaction in zero. Um, do you have to do that manually? It's a great question, Tom. So we do have support for zero attachments. So they should flow through. If you have any issues with it at all, please let us know because different, different transaction types have responded differently in the past. I think we've got a good beat on that now. But, uh, but yeah, let me know because that's an important part to be able to gather receipts and other supporting documentation for those transactions. All right, I think I got to the questions so far. Okay, any other questions? I'm happy to answer those. And otherwise, I know we're at the top of the hour. And so we can certainly wrap pretty soon. Oh, there's a Q&A tab with some additional uh, questions. Okay, I answered the one about the uncut t-shirt. And thank you for asking that. Um, uh, can you link to transactions coming in from a particular bank account in Zero and send this to a particular person, a different person for a different bank account? That's a great question. Yes. So for those transactions coming in from a certain bank account, you need you do need to reconcile them. So they need to go into an account on the general ledger in order for us to sync them. You know, put them, put those certain account, those certain transactions that you have questions about into that account. So you might call one, ask Joe, and assign those to Joe. And then meanwhile, you might route another bank account to ask Jane and then route those questions to Jane. And that's possible in that, in that section where you can assign particular payment accounts or particular uncategorized accounts to specific users. So yes, you can absolutely achieve it that way. Um, question from Renz. I wanna know if there's a way to communicate, at least for the accountants in Uncat without messaging on items, like a message board or chat box for the accountants. That's another good idea. Uh, we've heard that once or twice. The chat right now that we're adding, the global chat, which should come out later this week or early next week, will be one that's with each client. I, I understand you're describing something where it's perhaps just internal for the firm, just for accountants to chat amongst themselves. Uh, and we haven't added that yet, but I, but I like the idea. So if you have a minute to, Put it in the uh, the feedback board also. That'd be awesome just because it provides visibility and other folks can say, yeah, we want that too and, and vote it up. So yeah, thanks for thanks for using Uncat and thanks for the idea. Um, as, as you all can imagine, most of the things we build in Uncat come from ideas based on different firms have different workflows, different ways they work with clients. And so they're like, hey, can you support assigning a payment account? Can you support texting our clients because they're not checking email anymore? And so we add features based on that feedback. So it's super helpful. Um, can only accountants sign up for Uncat or can a client directly sign up? That's a good question too. Primarily our customers tend to be accountants and bookkeepers with clients that they wanna communicate with. However, we also have customers that are um, uh, clients and they'll sign up directly because the internal accountant or bookkeeper wants to communicate with their coworkers inside the company and use Uncat to ask those people questions about transactions. So we absolutely see that. If that kind of describes your situation, you can certainly use Uncat uh, and it'll work great. You'll basically you know, be an, an accountant user with, with one client, which is the company that you work with or for. So yeah, absolutely clients can directly sign up if they want. If you are working with an external accountant or bookkeeper though, ping them and have them sign up and then invite you as the client. That's the only caveat that I'll add. Okay, cool. Hopefully I've answered all those. I'm gonna mark them as, I'll mark them as done. And if you have more questions, pop them in. Okay. All right, Jorge, can you get an extension on your trial? Yeah, for sure. I will go and do that as soon as we wrap this webinar, I'll go into the system and, and shoot you a quick email uh, when it's done, but happy to, happy to extend it so you can get in there and and test it out. That's the key with any software, right? You want to test it out with your client, see how it works for you, get their feedback, make sure it's saving you time, you like the workflow, and then, uh, and then roll it out.
happy to do it. So Brandon, I think we should uh, wrap up our webinar. We, yep. What we're going to do, we can collect these uh, questions and we will put answers when we are um, distributing recording version. And everyone okay. will see what uh, your and my uh, answer was, right? Sounds great. Sounds great. Yep, everyone will be able to, to see the recording and the transcript. And so, yeah. hey, everybody, thanks again for spending time with us. And uh, if you have any questions at all, reach out. Uh, uh, obviously, both Yelena and I are very available to answer any questions and help you get set up if you need any help. And uh, yeah, we appreciate you coming and we'll follow up with an email to everybody. Amazing. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks, Elena. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Catherine you, Brandon. Renz. Appreciate it. Bye. Bye. Lisa, great to see you. All right. Thank you, everybody. Kurt, Miguel, thank you both. Have a great rest of Thursday. Or if you're on the other side of the world, perhaps Friday already. Hey, thanks, Jana. That's awesome. Hey, everybody likes the cat, right? Everyone's a fan of the cat. It just it makes people smile. <laughs>